Well, welcome everyone. I'm glad that you are here for uh, this Alpha Connect where we have invited Dave Shoemaker of Fellowship Alliance Chapel in Medford, New Jersey to um, to be in the hot seat today and, and, and serve as the co-host and just give us some really great ideas on things that they have done as a church um, to have such a successful Alpha for I think really close to 20 years. So I don't want to steal any of Dave's thunder. So I will just um, let you sort of introduce yourself, Dave, and then just say a few things about um, about your alpha, maybe the how long it's been going on, what the, the size of it is, how often you run it. Um, I'll, I'll um, offer up a few questions here and there for Dave to answer. And then we're just really going to kind of open it up for you guys to um, be able to ask whatever questions you want. All right. So as you know, Dave Shoemaker, uh, the church is Fellowship Alliance Chapel, and it's in uh, Medford, New Jersey. Um, the church has been around for uh, a little over 40 years. Uh, we probably uh, these days probably have maybe about 1500 people on on Sundays attending to a couple of services. Um, and uh, Alpha, uh, I believe Alpha started, a, you know, a little over 20 years ago. And I believe someone, I think our senior pastor um, was actually in England and noticed it and uh, took part in maybe an alpha intro, came back and told the staff, we need to jump on this. And uh, so about for about 20 years, we've, we've been doing it and they've been fully behind that uh, for a long time. Uh, one of the theories uh, before I got involved in it was that they wanted alpha running pretty much uh, all the time as much as possible. So that meant a fall semester that started right in mid-September uh, and then a winter uh, and then it would finish just before Thanksgiving. And then we do a winter uh, session uh, starting January after the first of the year that would end before Easter. And then a big one uh, after Easter services, uh, announcements for a lot of seekers that would come to the uh, Easter services. Uh, well, also to a Christmas, so the January uh, you know, the, the Christmas uh, uh, visitors would have the January uh, uh, launch and then the Easter visitors would have the spring launch and then we would take July and August off. And other than that, it was pretty much always running. So we were able to say, welcome to our church, try Alpha, you know, whether you've been, uh, if, whether if, you know, if they, they looked uh, like a very seasoned individual and they said they've been at another church for 40 years, we'd say, try alpha but they look like they were 17 try alpha so um you know that's that was kind of the message uh walking in uh each session would run about um we usually have between 80 to 100 guests uh and then the teams to support that and uh that would pretty much be the alpha uh, year and i've been involved in leading it over the last 10 years so that's kind of a rundown of the history and what's going on i believe that's great. And can you tell us how large your church is, just for perspective? I I think on a weekend we're about fifteen hundred uh, attenders over okay. given weekend these days. Okay. Um. So, why don't we just talk about the earliest days that you can that you know about or that you know historically, and and how did how did alpha take hold in your church so it's not just the pastor's idea and then the person who was leading the alpha but how did it go if if you know from being you know that thing that that alpha group does to being our thing that we do as a church so i i think it was one of the ministries at the church until our senior pastor took alpha so he went to England, saw it, got excited about it, said, hey, bring it. But I think it was one of the ministries uh, until he took Alpha. And then he was like, oh, wow, this is this is totally unbelievable. I, I have people that I need to bring and I need to tell everybody in our church and everybody in our staff, they need to bring people. Until you live it live, you really have no idea what Alpha is. Mm -hmm. um, so even now we've had a change and a transition uh, and our senior pastor, our founding pastor for 40 years, finally retired. Uh, I would think he's a little tired right now. Um, but after 40 years, he retired. Uh, and our and our new senior pastor hasn't done Alpha 
And so again, it's like one of the ministries. So it's very, it feels very, very different at our church, but for the years that it took in building it up, um, I think what really ignited it, it was that he took Alpha and he was able to live it. He was able to live, you know, Holy Spirit uh, Saturday. He was able to live the small groups and the conversations and what took place and, you know, the films that, you know, were way back when. So that's what really took it off. And I was introduced to Alpha. I was a believer, but I went up to somebody uh, who announced it and I said, well, what is Alpha? And I loved, I loved what they told me. They said, Alpha is a course designed for anyone to take their next step on their journey of faith. And I thought that was great because so many people think they believe so much more than they really have any idea. Like they may have gone to church a few times at Sunday school. And it's like, well, yeah, I'm a Christian. I went to, I went, I went to church, you know, for three years when I was in fourth grade, you know, fourth, you know, in grade school. So it's like, you know, like they're done. That's pretty much the end of all, you know, knowledge about God. So by saying to anybody, it's wherever you're at, it's the next step on your journey of faith. I thought that was a great introduction to me. I'd be like, well, I'll take it. So I took it, was totally excited about it. And I proceeded to take all my friends. So as soon as I took it, I just invited everybody, you know, I had lifelong friends, you know, my buddy from high school who always thinks, you know, science and God don't connect. And so I took him to Alpha and he's like, oh, okay, I don't really have any good excuses here. So then it just kind of took off. So that's what really uh, got the church ignited was the senior pastor physically taking the Alpha course. And then, and then, you know, any, anybody that would come into church would be like, hello, you know, welcome and try Alpha. And then the welcome pastor and then basically everybody on the staff. And then of course that 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 kind of leaks through through the congregation. I think that's a really good point that you that you raise of it just being the the stance that the church has. Oh, you're new here, try Alpha. And um, I, I I I know my own church did that for a short period of time, and and it was it was really effective when we did it that way. But just regardless of what somebody's experience with uh, with Jesus is, to just say try alpha. Um, so there are a lot of people in different churches, probably uh, all the churches represented on this Zoom screen, who who do love alpha, but don't, don't then make that next step of going and inviting their friends. So I know you're not unique at FAC in, in, in that approach, because I've heard some of your other um, past alpha guests who just have the same philosophy of coming again, bringing a friend, always bringing a friend. Can you speak to how that happened maybe in your own heart, how you, um, how it happens in, for other people? Is there, is there something that you guys do to communicate? Yeah, we need to come and bring friends to this. Well, and I guess that goes a little bit into like, you know, how, how did, how, you know, how did we grow Alpha? So uh, I had, my path was that, so I attended Alpha, got excited about it, brought several of my friends to Alpha, and then probably took a little bit of a break. And then they asked me to lead Alpha. So when I came back, I was very excited to say, okay, how can we take this to the next level? And there's probably a lot of people that have that same question. So the first, so so the first thing I focused on really was promotions. This is kind of a two two part answer. So really focused. I said, you know, to me it was um, people just didn't know. Like the senior pastor didn't know how great Alpha was. So I thought to myself, I know how great it is. The senior pastor knows how great. The leaders who have gone through it know how great. But how can we get that word out in a tangible way to the people sitting in the church pews or anywhere in 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 our given geography? Um, so I really, really focused on a lot of different things. So specifically what we did was we started a three weeks of stage announcements prior to any alpha launch. So the first two weeks were very specifically invite a friend, you know, very specifically. So the majority of the messaging uh, through videos, through Alpha USA videos um, was see God in prayer, ask him to bring to mind all the people that he wants you to invite to Alpha and then go invite them for the next session. So that was that was two weeks of stage announcements. 
And then the third week of stage announcements before was specifically targeted to if anybody was listening that needed to come to Alpha was, hey, you want to explore faith? You know, if you have questions, Alpha is a safe place. All the messaging of Alpha. So two weeks of pray and ask friends. And then one week of very specifically, you're invited, come out. And yes, for everyone else in the, you know, congregation, make sure you're writing those friends too. So that was the first thing we did. The next thing that we did for promotions was we did what we call God at work stories. So we would have somebody whose life was dramatically changed at Alpha and they would account firsthand what happened. So it was typically, typically a three to five minute uh, video of somebody asking questions, very carefully crafted. What was your like before you came to Alpha? What happened during the Alpha course? And how did God meet you through Alpha? And what is your life now? And so we would we would play those uh, in one of those first three the, those three weeks of promotion. We would play those videos so people have a real tangible idea from an other than announcer's perspective of how awesome Alpha really uh, kind of touched them. Um, and then we did all kind of silly little things. Uh, we did yard signs. Um, one of the things I did was I went out and got nice, uh, like, uh, not like this flannel shirt, but nice button down Oxford shirts that had the big alpha logo on. So we had a team of like 30 or 40 people and they, and they would be 30 or 40 people with the brightest red I could humanly find in America with an alpha logo in the center of it. And we'd be walking around church for the month leading up to alpha. So anything that entered my mind as a way to get the word out to get somebody to say, okay, you're wearing a really obnoxious shirt. What's alpha, you know, and then we could have that conversation. We would, uh, I would always be in the back with, with other people on the team. Every time there was an announcement, it was always be like, Hey, if you want to talk further, go back and talk to the people in the bright red shirts about alpha. So really anyway, and of course, social media, which, you know, the only social media that I have ever, I've spent thousands on social media. And I can say personally that the only social media that, that I've seen personally to grab traction, uh, unless you spend, you know, years and years on a campaign, is the organic social media. So if you put on your feed, um, hey, we got alpha going, you know, um, you know, I'd love, I'd love for any of my friends to come, you know, message me or something. So that type of, so advertising uh, does something, but organic messaging to friends uh, does a whole lot more. And I'm trying to, th oh, and then banners. Of course, we put banners out in front of the church. So banners, table signs, shirts. I mean, literally anything that I can think of to promote it. And, and you know, the funny thing was a lot of it, No, nobody nobody's going to drive by the church, you know, banner and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to, well, maybe somebody will. But it's more for like, you know, everybody in the congregation, they're driving by and they're reminded, oh, I got to, I got to ask Bob to Alpha. That's right. I got to. So it's, it's, you hit people from all different directions, of course, ba a bathed in prayer, but you just got to get the word out. And I think it's like unlimited to the creativity of how you get the word about, out about something. So that was the first, the first, the first thing that we really, really, really did. Um, and then I would say we focused on adding things, changing things, accelerating things, doing it bigger. To the point of like the center of town banners and everything and then i got to the point where like i said i'm promoting this as much as we can on the promotion side and then our focus changed i would say there was a shift not a shift so all that was in place we continued it but then the shift was um to make alpha the best it possibly could be and the most important component uh, other than prayer was the radical hospitality component so we really shifted towards, so when someone comes to Alpha, you know, that they just need to feel that there is something really different here and it's different than church. It's different than the last meeting they went to or they've never been inside a church building and this is welcoming and okay. So we really focused on every single component from when they touch the door handle um, to all the way through to when they left. So. If I can, Bonnie, I'll just maybe go through those. Yeah, right. please do. Please do. So so we very specifically would, you know, assign people to wait at points all through um, the building to when the, till they got to their seat. So we'd have maybe four or five people 
you know, and it all depends on the size of your church and your foyer and all that. So we have four or five people. So nobody ever, no guest ever had to open the door. Somebody threw a door open, uh, shake a hand or wave, uh, welcome to Alpha. And then there was somebody midway through, hey, glad you're here. Go that way. That's where you sign in. You know, the, the expectation is that there'll be people there that have never been at your church, probably a lot of them. So where do they even need to go? They might be wandering around the parking lot. So you're throwing the door open so they even know what door to come into, you know? We get so used to going to our churches and knowing every nook and cranny. What if somebody drives into the parking lot has no idea what to do? On my email before Alpha's start, I always tell them what parking lot off what street and what section and the door says, you know, you just have to remember if they've never been there, they don't know anything. So anyway, so the door flies open. Um, our church, uh, the building that we have Alpha in, some of the sound system wasn't great, like in the foyers and all that. So I went out and got uh, iPods and uh, Bluetooth speakers. So I would have uh, a very specific up Christian music set. So, and believe me, if you ever tried that, it's hard. So much Christian music, contemporary music starts out real, real quiet. And then it, and then it gets up and lively. So I had to find an, an hour long set that was started up and lively all the way through to the end. And I eventually put it together one day, but anyway, so very up lively music from the second they walk in, they just feel just, you know, God's presence, energy, um, just, you know, kind of like this is, this is a place that's fun and it's welcoming. And then I would personally stand at like the door into the area where we have the large group and just shake hands with people. And I would really study their faces. Um, I've said it on interviews before, like I've gone up to people and literally said, it's okay. You don't have to be afraid. This isn't church. You're going to be all right. You're going to live through this. And, you know, I would have a lot of fun with it, just kind of joke around. But some people literally like, I mean, they just look wide eyed and terrified. Like there's going to be three people in a corner holding a candle and a Bible and I'm in trouble right now. And it's like, you just have to dispel. It's like, it's okay. We're going to have fun. We got dinner around the corner. You know, it's a blast. So you know, you as leaders, you know, leading the charge with that fun, welcoming, and then leaders just stationed all along the way. And then we always serve the food because uh, we just want to just have that point like welcome and how much do you want? Just another point. And then obviously we get them organized to tables. But we used to, we used to pre preset where people were going to go in the different groups because we've had anywhere from six to 10 groups or 12 sometimes. Um, but we just let people sit down where they want to, and that's where they stay. Um, so really that just, and then, and then, um, so, and uh, then background music is, you know, uh, in the hallways, the foyers, walking up the ramp in the main building, especially when they would go in the big room where dinner is. Uh, most people probably say that the background music was louder than it should be. And I've, you know, gotten a lot of comments. But people also walked in and said, wow, this is fun. What's going on here? Mm. Uh, and then as soon as, the, obviously, we turn the music off when it starts. But then the second the videos are over and it's dismissed to the rooms, I've got the AV guys. They're all set to play the music. So there's just not one awkward moment at all. And then when they go back into the rooms, I'm always the first one there. I'll make sure I go to the bathroom during the video if I have to. So I'm the first one in, in the video. I have these little story card questions. I put them immediately to work. I just really work hard on focusing on not having an awkward moment, literally until they walk out the door at the end of the night. And I've analyzed every minute of the night about a million times. And uh, I, I, it, just, it just really lands on people very differently. Of course, it's God who does the work. It's the Holy Spirit who moves people's hearts. And that's actually why I can you know, focus on making alpha so much fun because to me I, if, if there's one thing i would say as, as far as actually running the small group uh the more i focused on making it lighter and more fun the more god really showed up and did the heavy lifting and really worked in people's hearts the minute i tried to do what god's supposed to do it never really worked out well um i'm not really a pastoral kind of guy um uh, i wouldn't consider myself a bible teacher so that's not really my gift anyway, but I feel like there's, you know, we all know there's so much teaching in Alpha. Um, so when you get to the small group, it's, it's really surprising that the lighter you host the group, 
the, it, it just allows people to let their guard down so they can go deeper. Anytime I've ever tried to really focus on getting a, a group deeper, it just goes the other way for me personally. And that's been my experience. Hmm. So I'm going to take a breath and see what else you want to chat about this, Bonnie. That, uh, that was so good. I think especially that, that ending part about the lighter you host the group, the more Holy Spirit actually shows up and the more, the more it can happen. And I, I think that's, that's really true. It is supposed to be this safe space for people and certainly not a time for us to keep um, blabbing on about all the facts and figures that we know about the Bible or about theology. Um, I think I just have one more question, then I think we're going to open it up for conversation. And then, um, and please, when you ask your question, if you could just say your name, what church you're from, and just maybe how, how much experience you have with running Alpha, that might just be helpful for all of us. Um, so I would just ask you about your Alpha team. Um, like how, how do you recruit your team? Um, does, does your team, what percentage of your team tends to be like year after year, they stay on the team and, and how much of your team from one year to the next comes from folks from the last course? Um, so very good question. There's a lot of moving parts to that. So we used to, we used to have, uh, well, one of the things we do is we do a, a survey in week nine in the back of it, and we can talk about that later, but on the back of the survey, it said, you know, what's your next step? And one of them was, you know, join the alpha team. So that kind of opened the invitation to anybody and everybody. And, um, that didn't actually work out well. <laughs> um, I feel like God's taught me a few things. Actually, I feel like God teaches me something at every session if not every night, um, because we've tried so many things and made so many mistakes. Um, so then you get people who are who are dear and sincere, but not really gifted to be alpha hosts uh, or even helpers. Uh, so, so what we ended up doing was, so the way we invite people to the alpha team of hosts and helping um, is by asking them. So I just tell the, our, our hosts um, that, are, that are hosting groups, if you see somebody that really looks like they, you know, it's, would be gifted towards leading or hosting, uh, helping an alpha group, then ask them. Um, and one of the interesting things that we do is uh, sometimes um, when we ask someone to help facilitate, I always put it this way, and this probably came from Alpha USA, so, hey, I hope so. Uh, but I always say that the qualification is they want to continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've, seen, I've seen many people that have filled in at the helper role really connect to faith through being a helper so being a, a leader on the alpha team as a helper and that's where they really connect to god um so it's really nice to leave that help host role is different but the helper role it's really nice to leave that totally wide open mm -hmm. uh, we've always had more long-term people than i guess i would like to see um there's there's pro i would say there's probably two-thirds of the team that is typically there for years uh, and a third that, that is new and rotating. Um, I think more half and half or even two thirds new would be even better, but there's just so many people that just love Alpha so much and love to see people. They just love the program so much that they just kind of uh, continue on. But I mean, it's a very slow, long-term over many years, kind of continual turnover uh, of people that I've seen. Um, but there's at least maybe a third that are new each time that are asked from the last alpha. And I would say maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit, you know, more than a third that's, you know, within a year or two of, of being open to the program. So. All right. Well, great. Well, I think, um, I think hopefully the, the little conversation that we've just had there has sparked some uh, lots of questions for you guys. So feel free to just you know unmute if you are muted and introduce yourself and and ask away. Uh, hi, I'm Tasha, and um, I I pastor a church called Storehouse Church in Plymouth Meeting, and uh, Plymouth Meeting, Pennsylvania, and um, we have run alpha a number of times and Dan's on this call and he leads the alpha team. Um, and 
I myself have, have done alpha. It was very significant, my husband's um, faith journey. And so we love alpha. Um, so my question is uh, specifically about how you run alpha in conjunction with other groups. Like, is it on the same semester based schedule? Do you, how do you like promote alpha, but also promote other groups? Are they just done at different times? Um, yeah. I, 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 and is it part of a discipleship pathway, like a broader thing that you're saying, you know, everyone should do alpha. And then do you say, here's the next step after alpha um, as part of a, a broader discipleship plan? I, I think the key, great question. And I think the key is, I think the key is to uh, invite everyone as step one to do alpha. So, you know, somebody could come to your church and you're talking and they're like, oh, yes, we, we just moved up from Florida. We went to a great church down there for the last 30 years. And, you know, we're grounded in our faith and, you know, we love following God. And um, even to those people, you say, well, you know what? The great first step at our church uh, is Alpha, uh, because it's just so surprising the things that I've learned. People may have gone to a, a club for 30 years and they really haven't really learned much about the Christian faith at all. It's, it's just continually surprising. And if, and, and if they are a very grounded, uh, very mature Christian, then, then they get to experience Alpha. The other thing too, is I always tell people say, hey, if you're brand new to the church, Alpha is a great place to start. It certainly addresses the foundations of the Christian faith, but what a great spot to meet people. You can't meet people walking in and out of church. I walked in and out of my church for maybe 10 years. I knew two people, two. Now I know hundreds of people um, because of Alpha. Um, so that's really that's really our pitch is like, hey, do Alpha. Oh, well, that sounds like a beginner course. You know what? Uh, it is about some basics of the Christian faith, but it's a great way to meet 10 or 12 new people. And if you're new to the area, if you're new to the church, it starts off some friendships and it's a really great way to launch. And then from there, you can pick any one of all the other ministries that we have. Um, as far as how we announced it, uh, we always just, uh, you know, that's that was pretty much the messaging. If you're new to the church, uh, we suggest this is, is the first path on your discipleship journey. Um, and, if you've, and, if, and if you've been around a long time, you've never done Alpha, you should try Alpha because, again, it's a great place uh, to, to dig deeper into the foundations of the faith and to get to know people. Um, it's funny how I always say Alpha is so, one of the reasons Alpha is so effective is because it's amazing to me how even I could go to church, sit down, listen, think I'm listening, and it's gone. When you do Alpha, it's a two-way. So church is always a one-way. When you go to Alpha, you're engaging. So when someone has to think of how to respond to a question, all of a sudden now their mind is much more engaged in the topic. And I feel like that's where the Holy Spirit really starts to dig into our minds and change us. So that's, I mean, I, I, so, I mean, I went to church starting at age two, maybe two months, maybe two weeks. And, you know, I left home at 18, didn't go to church for 10 years. So I had a whole lifetime of church training. When I went to Alpha the first time, I learned more about the Christian faith than I ever learned in the first 18 years of my life. So there's something very engaging and so basic and foundational. You can't be, well, you could, but you know, most churches aren't that basic and foundational every week. You couldn't do 10 messages over and over forever. So everybody, literally everybody, regardless of how long they've walked with the Lord, is going to get a ton out of Alpha. And I think that's the message uh, you know, from the front that needs to go to the church, from the church to the people. And so just uh, as a follow-up, do you promote other groups from the front as well? We have, yeah. so in our church, so we have semester-based groups in our church. And so I'm just wondering, like when you are doing promotion, get in a group, get in a group. We have three semesters, you know, the similar semesters to what you mentioned. And we're saying, get in a group. We're saying, but really alpha. I'm just wondering how that messaging works. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So we have three semesters as well. Um, and alpha launches uh, like one of the, like everything else launches. So there's, you know, so if the, you know, if the uh, winter se semester just launched, so everything is launching in January. And one of the, one of the many things is, is alpha as well. So you could just say, here's what's available. Um, you know, alpha's, alpha's, you know, our first suggestion, or if you haven't done alpha, certainly do that. And then just announce the other things accordingly. 
we try real high. You know, I think every church tries not to overdo announcements. You know, it's like, oh, you know. So as I think especially people, as, so I'm just a church attender for the most part. I think people that run churches stress more about announcements than people who listen to the announcements. I would, I, f I feel like I wish they would say more upfront. They talk for three minutes. I would love to listen to 10 minutes of what's going on because sometimes I just don't take the time to read the newsletter or go on the website or whatever. I love announcements. I want to know what's going on. That's one of the reasons I showed up to church kind of thing, you know, so it doesn't bother me, but they announce it just like they announce everything else. And we try to do, you know, that our church probably tries, if we're, if we're kicking something off in January, they probably take mid-December to early January to announce everything that's happening in the middle, middle of January launch. So. And I know some not, churches. Not, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, so it's not like they list all 10 things the week before it starts. They'll, you know, they'll, they'll announce a couple of, of things that, you know, here's for ladies, here's the men's, here's the Bible studies, this, all those things leading up to the week where it actually launches. And some churches will have what they consider their beta course, you know, whatever they want you to take after taking alpha. Um, they'll intentionally have that on the same night. So uh, like all of your courses could be offered on the same night. And um, sometimes then the one that's the alpha and the, the what they're calling beta is they share the meal together in the beginning. So that's also an option too. If you want everybody to come back to church on like a Wednesday night and there's going to be shared meal, but the alpha tables are here and the you know men's ministry tables are there and the women's, are, the, what, whatever, you could all be together not overcomplicating things for you, but you know, if you wanted to do that sort of a thing, then it's a, okay, every Wednesday night, we all come back to church and we do something, but then the alpha folks go off this way and the other course goes that way. And the other course goes that way. Um, I think what you guys are thinking of doing is, is kind of an alpha relaunch because you have done alpha before. So my church is actually going through the same thing right now. And so we um, have started a a drip campaign. The, the pastor is doing a drip campaign where so every week he's giving me real estate in the, the program to write something. And so I'm crafting this campaign that's going to it could be 52 weeks long, basically, of everything that you ever wanted to know about Alpha, just in these little bite-sized bits. Um, and I spoke at our church um, at both services yesterday to really just say, Alpha is for everyone. If you don't know Jesus, Alpha is for you because it's it's an evangelism tool. If you know Jesus and have been following him for a long time, but you still have some niggly questions and you just, where are you going to ask them? Because you supposed you should have all the questions answered by now, you think. Well, it's a discipleship tool as well. And so Alpha is for you. And maybe you don't have, you've been a Christian for a long time and you don't have any questions anymore, but who wouldn't like a fresh encounter with the Lord Jesus and a touch from the Holy Spirit? Like maybe you've never had before well alpha is also encounter and uh, and experience and so alpha is for you and then i think one of the most important things too for our folks to know is that alpha is a tool for us to share faith with our friends without having to have a theology degree or a degree in apologetics or anything like that it's just inviting your friend to come and meet jesus just like dave had already described that he had done so i think there, there are those four different things that we can offer to every parishioner to say, at some point, you really need to do alpha for one of these four reasons. And so you might then be saying, all right, as we're relaunching, we want to get everybody to run through alpha at some point within the next year. Y'all don't have to do it in the fall, but we want everybody to go through it for one of those four reasons. So that's just another you know, thing you can think about. Absolutely. One of the uh, one of the things um, that struck me just this past weekend uh, in thinking about Alpha and sharing today, I was I was I was just kind of noticing what was going on uh, at church this weekend. Um, is one of the things that I've encouraged our leaders is to think about um, each guest as the beginning of uh, potentially a long term friendship. Um, and I was reminded of that because I was in the foyer waiting for somebody. And uh, person after person would go by and it'd be like, yep, I met, they were in my alpha group five years ago. They were in my group two years ago. They were in my group six months ago. 
And I just saw all these, these people that have now turned into long-term friends. And of course, it's not going to be everybody, but I, but I've challenged the leaders and challenged myself to think of the guests on night one, not as a, a 10 week project, but, um, you know, as this could be a future friend of mine that I'm going to get to know and God's going to use them in my life and me in their life. And I think, I think if you approach the guests in your group that way, it really, you know, you know, they say, be real, um, be real, have fun and show up. I think that's how you, you, you become real. I think that's one of the, one of the keys to being real is I think this, you're not a project, but it's, and it's, it's funny. It's, you know, what comes in on the inside, what's going on the inside really comes out. And uh, I was just reminded this past weekend of just seeing all these people walk by that I've, you know, that I'm now friends with at all different levels. And, and they came from, they came from Alpha. So just a little side nugget there. That one was for free. All right. Who else has a question? No charge on that one. I'll tell you. <laughs> No charge. Well, I'll, I'll just jump in. Uh, my name is Dan Fitzgerald. Uh, and Tasha referred to me uh, as an alpha leader at our church uh, storehouse in uh, Plymouth Meeting, PA. Um, we've done, I've been part of leading two alphas now. And um, at, at the end of each alpha, um, we've had the question as leaders, well, what comes next? And, and we've had some guidance on that. Um, but I'm just wondering how you approach that. People are, are at all ends of the spectrum um, in, their, in their faith journey, in a spiritual journey. Um, do you uh, do any targeting of the folks who especially are, are new to the faith or may have come to faith during alpha as a, as a follow-up? Um, so it's a great question. And when I took, um, when I started leading alpha, um, after they did their survey, there was like five or six options. And what I very quickly evaluated was that giving people several different options, um, they did nothing. So, so what we've, so what we've learned is that you really need to create a specific path for people. Uh, it it's, it's been much more successful for us to say, all right, you've done alpha, here's your next step. And then, you know, here's your next step and they can divert off the path. It's a free country. They can do whatever they like. Um, but if you don't give them a specific path, they go, Hmm. And they stay in that stance for the rest of their lives. So uh, having a very specific path uh, has been very important to us. Uh, we've done different things. We've had, so on week nine of Alpha, we make it very clear through announcements. Uh, first of all, we wanna continue to make Alpha better. So here's a survey and we wanna hear about your journey. Uh, so we do a survey on week nine. And then the other part of that, before I hand them the surveys, because I keep them hostage and say, here's the survey, fill it out, not bring it back, not do it online because you get about 10% participation if you do it online or you hand it to them. So no, here's your survey, here's your pen, and then you look at them. And that's how you get a survey back. <laughs> Actually only 85%, but that's a lot better than 10%. Um, but then before I hand them the surveys, I say, let's talk about your next step. And of course I say, a great next step is number one, come back with a friend. And that's probably what, that's probably about a third of what, uh, how we get new guests is come back with a friend. I mean, we instruct, we encourage that strongly because just like I experienced as I sat through my first alpha and then the one after that, I was sitting there thinking, I got to bring my friend, Andy. I know Andy would get so much. I got to bring Andy. So as alpha is going on, I'm inviting Andy. I'm saying, look, I'm going to remind you in January this, you know, so people are sitting there thinking. And so I literally bring it up and say, you know, if you're like me, God's been prompting you to bring somebody. So come back with a friend. So that's step one, moving forward. Um, if you feel ready and you want to, God's calling you to the next level course. We have, you know, XYZ course, and this is what we promote as the next step. And then have the specifics ready. It starts on March or, you know, April 15th after Easter. That's the third semester of the year. And this is what it's about. And by the way, here's a video clip. I mean, you have your audience right there that you want to move from here to there. So you'd be totally ready. Of course, I'm always promoting, come back with a friend. And a lot of people will do both. 
They'll come back with a friend and they'll take the next course because they're just overexcited. But having both those things ready to go uh, seemed to really be huge. One of the things we've done recently is rooted as a course, uh, and that seemed to be uh, uh, really effective. We've done that once so far. Uh, I'm waiting for our senior pastor to decide uh, if we're going to continue with that or not. But um, that was really effective, the, uh, the rooted program. That's because it's very interactive like Alpha. So a lot of different ways you can do it, but I think you're prepared ahead of time. You announce that on a specific time plan. You give people a couple of weeks, week nine, week 10, to hear about it and uh, uh, and then kind of push them in that direction. Great. And I wanted to share one other thing too, that um, it's, it's kind of like the whole survey idea, but the last two alphas that I was in, um, in, in both of them, they ended the last night by going around the, the group and just asking everybody to share, what was your favorite thing about alpha? And, you know, they didn't have to write it down in a survey. They're not going to, they won't give that level of detail. Oh my goodness. The, the testimonies that people shared during that time. I mean, I just took so many notes when people were saying or that when I got home, I just, I, I, I wrote it all down because it blessed me so much. And so I just share that just so that, you know, you, you have those stories because it's easy to forget those stories if we don't write them down and then that can be like as Dave was set, was sharing about their God at work stories then you you know like okay well who are the people that I really should go and try to interview as and to make a video but you never you don't know unless you ask people what what was your favorite part about alpha you'd be surprised what you hear that's that's always that's always the last that's the only question I've ever asked on week 10 it seems like it always takes the entire you know hour that we have for conversation time yeah um it's it's always the same you know what uh what did you get out of it what was your favorite thing what did god teach you however you want to answer the question and then people just open up and they just share what 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 god has taught them through alpha and that usually takes about an hour if you go around the room 10 or 12. yeah other questions don't be shy hi i'm addy uh, I'm from Accelerate Church. David, you might be familiar with us in Cherry Hill. We just launched a little over a year ago. Uh, and so we're getting ready to launch our first ever Alpha. So um, obviously I'm familiar with Alpha from another church and was part of the team uh, that, you know, hosted and led um, Alpha in both English and actually Spanish. Um, so quite familiar with Alpha, but kind of launching it for the first time here. Uh, our pastor has actually started to talk about it as well from the stage. So he's done that now for a couple of weeks. Um, and so I guess my question is, when you think back, um, because my familiarity with Alpha at my previous church, I wasn't there, you know, when they launched Alpha for the first time. And so here I am kind of pioneering um, Alpha for the first time. So what did your team look like? when you first started Alpha and what was participation like? So how many people were there and then comparing it to today? What does it look like today? What's the size of your team today? And then, uh, you know, how many people on average? It sounds like you probably have about 100 people that come. Um, so just trying to get a sense for that. And then I'll have a follow-up question specifically related to Alpha Weekend, but I guess we, we can talk about this first. Um, so I'm a little spoiled because everything was in place when I started. So when I when I showed up, there was like eight groups, you know, eight groups of 10 or 12 people. So I did not go through the beginning pains. Uh, I believe when we started, uh, we might have started with one group, um, which I would think would be typical one or two groups. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's probably a lot of people like me who wanted to go through it, make sure it is what it is. Now I can trust that I can bring my friend. Um, so, you know, usually it starts starts out with a couple of groups and then it just grows from there. Uh, I'm a firm believer in the, in the model of two hosts and two helpers. It's just huge. I mean, there's 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 a lady that's always on my my group. Well, the other thing too is if if who was ever the main lead for Alpha, they've got to host a group. I I don't feel I feel like everything that God has taught me about Alpha not not because I was on an admin side, but because I was knee deep in it all the time. So whoever is leading it, you you know you're you're knee deep in it. Um, because God is just constantly teaching you things. Well, that didn't work. Oh, that question's awkward. How do I get this group to start? I mean, how how can I teach? How can I help lead other hosts and helpers 
with the questions that they have if I'm not handling that same challenge on a weekly basis. And every group's so dramatically different. You've done alpha a few times. You got the group that won't shut up. Then you got the group that's got the dominant talkers. Then you got the group where, you know, some, I mean, the first alpha that I went to, funny said, my name is so-and-so. Uh, my son committed suicide last week and my daughter is cutting tonight. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you know, so it's just insane what you run into. So, um, so, th so that's a huge thing is to just be at the center of it. But the alpha model is, is really designed well because you need all those people. You need a couple of people in, in the hosting role. And like for me, there's been a couple of ladies that are always on my team. You know, ladies reach out to ladies the way they only can. Men reach out to men the way they only can. Uh, and especially people who have been hurt, men that have been hurt, women that have been hurt, uh, especially by the, you know, by the opposite gender. Uh, so it's just huge. So the team itself, we stuck hard to two hosts and two helpers. Uh, so there was always, you know, so if you do that and you have eight guests, it's almost, uh, you know, uh, for every two guests, you've, you've got somebody there that's, that's got a loving heart that wants to reach out to them. And I think that's how you care well um, for, for your group. So I would say do whatever it takes to try to achieve, you know, two hosts and two helpers in a group of 12. Because to me, that's huge. Because you can only care for so many people well in a group in a given alpha night. So having having a full team in place is huge. So if I was starting an alpha, that's what I would focus on. I if I, I would think to myself, okay, if I'm going to launch this, I'm going to anticipate there's going to be two groups, maybe 25, 30 people. Uh, and but I'm going to prepare for four just in case the last minute they show up. That's what I would do. I hey, would great. Totally yeah, good. appreciate that. Thank you. Alpha weekend. That's my follow up question. Where where do you host that? And what structure? You know, do you do the few days? Do you do just the Saturday? You know, my experience has been previously with Alpha that we just kind of had everything done in a Saturday. But obviously, there's that schedule to do it over a few days and starting on Friday evening. What do you do now? And do you host it uh, right at the church? Or do you actually go somewhere on retreat? Um, so I would, I would love to say that I've, 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 I've experimented with going away for a weekend, but unfortunately, uh, we have just done single Saturdays. So, uh, I will say they've been extremely effective. Uh, so we just do a Saturday, uh, we'll, we'll start at, uh, you know, breakfast at eight 30, um, start serving food at eight 15 and we'll go to nine o'clock, uh, and then start, start the day program. And we're usually wrapped up by, uh, three o'clock. So we try not to make it too long. And I think that's part of our ask. Uh, maybe we've just been too uh, wimpy and, and not enough faith to try a weekend. Um, but what's worked well for us is a full Saturday. And we and, and the other thing is, is to me, I think it's a really big ask for somebody to walk in the door. Um, uh, you know, week one, they don't know anybody. They're brand new and they're an invited guest. Uh, and then we usually did it after week six. So now six weeks later, now we're asking you to give us a full Saturday. So what we've done to kind of help overcome that is uh, four weeks. So starting like week three, we start talking about Super Saturday. So week three, we're like, hey, just mark your calendars. We've got this thing called Super Saturday or Holy Spirit Saturday, whatever you want to call it. And it's, it's Saturday. It's from 830 to 330. And it's a blast. We'll tell you more about it. And then the next week is, let me tell you what happens on Super Saturday. We got two meals going on. We got a great breakfast. And then our host, our MC, will talk about, you know, how amazing the French toast casserole is. And there will also be fruit. And why would you eat fruit on a good Saturday? And make a big joke about it and have a lot of fun. And then the next week, we would talk about, you know, what we actually do on Super Saturday is we dig into the Holy Spirit. Many of you may have gone to church a lot. How much have you talked about the Holy Spirit? Not much, probably, right? We dig into it, and that's our conversation. And then the week before, we actually did an interview. We always did an interview with people, and we'd bring up two random, uh, usually like a host couple, and say, hey, do you remember the first time you were invited to Super Saturday? Did you want to go? No, we were scared. We didn't know what. We thought it was weird. We just thought it was really weird. And then they'd be like, well, did you go? Uh, yeah. Kind of begrudgingly, but we went. How was it? No, it was awful. No, actually, you know, what 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 did you like about Super? Well, you know, the food was awesome. So just a real casual kind of interview conversation. And then it'll end with, well, really, I mean, if you could tell somebody who's, you know, this is their first time at Alpha, 
uh, you know, if you could encourage them to actually try Super Saturday, what would you say? You would say, you know what? I was surprised how much I learned about the Holy Spirit in prayer. I never really had much of a prayer life. And now between my prayer life and learning about the Holy Spirit, man, it was really worth it to carve out the day. And you know what? It's nice to do something different than just, you know, go to the grocery store on a Saturday. And so we had a very specific four-week march encouraging people, trying not to oversell it, but making people fully aware. Because we'll say, hey, come out to a Saturday away. And we know what that means. But our guests have no clue what in the world that means. It's like, what am I up for? So very specific plan for Saturday. Yeah, and if I can piggyback off of that, Alpha Mid-Atlantic in the fall, we offer a regional uh, Holy Spirit Day away. And um, so we, we've we always done this last year. I think we, or this past fall, I think we've just started to finally come out of the pandemic and we had 170 people there from 15 churches, Catholic, Protestant, evangelical, non-denominational, liturgical, Pentecostal and everything in between. So it's a it's a beautiful time. We're I I the last two years I've tried to see if there was interest in doing one for the for the winter session, which would be this year, March 11th. But because everybody starts, most churches start their um, September, their fall alpha right about the same time, the second or third week of September. But after Christmas, the start time is just, it's really all over the place. So there's not as much of a critical mass. So we haven't really been able to, to do it, but you can always count on it in the fall. Um, I believe Anne Marie on this call actually came from all the way out farther in South Jersey than um, you were at the one in 2020 one weren't you Anne marie oh, i think you're on mute but i personally was not able to i did the entire um the diocese of camden sponsored the course yeah all 100 and whatever we 65 parishes we were uh, eligible to come i didn't but those people who went spoke highly 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 of it there was tremendous feedback um we came we come from gloucester county and there were um, most of us all the all the way from down the Atlantic shore. City. Yeah. 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 They had some people and what so pretty much the six southern counties of New Jersey, everybody sent somebody different numbers, but um yeah, yeah, and highly was highly acclaimed. So you would be uh, most welcome to join us for the fall one. And I send out a lot of publicity about that through the newsletter and then the signups through um through our website. Um and yeah, I just, I agree with Dave that it's not something you talk about on week one or two, but like by week three, you, you start like a little bit of a teaser. And then after week four, you, you really start to talk about it and uh, you will have resistance from people who will say, yeah, I'm not going to that. And you're like, no, oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And you just keep praying and you keep praying and, you know, you'll probably see them there. Thank you. Exactly. Oh, and I'm a Cherry Hill born and raised girl. So I'm oh, great. Happy yeah, you're in the area well. I had a pretty, uh, just a logistical question on serving the meals. Um, I would assume that you have a, a, a kitchen right there in your, do you not have a kitchen? No kitchen. That, okay, good. Oh, well, this oh. is good because we don't have an oven or we have logistical issues in serving a meal at our church. So I would love to hear how you guys do it. Um, when they asked me to leave, they, they, they had different caterers and, um, you know, the meals, I think the numbers that are in my head are pre COVID. So we might need to disregard it, but at least you have a ratio. So at cater catering, it was like 10, 11, $12. And it was like pasta and pasta, more pasta. So we immediately, when, when I asked, they asked me to leave, we immediately went to shop, right. So a local grocery store. Um, and that was, that was massive. We cut our cost in half. Uh, and they just delivered the meals hot. Um, so, so the setup is basically, we just put out, you know, the long tables. Um, and then, you know, the, the local grocery store gives you all the, the catering, uh, you know, pans and trays. And um, uh, then they would just deliver fresh sternos every week. Uh, so we had a whole hospitality team um, of, you know, between four and six people that would just basically set up, uh, uh, set up all the catering trays. They would bring the trays hot, put them in the sterno, you know, full pan trays, and that was it. So we 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 never cooked anything. 
So maybe um, Bonnie and Dave, I would echo that we have used ShopRite catering numerous times and recommended it to other parishes who've gotten rid of the caterers they had. Their price is excellent and the quality of the food, and they never, ever mess up. They come right on time. Um, they come back to clean it up if you want them to, whatever. Um, definitely, definitely a plus for if you're the person worrying about those details, they'll take those details off your hands and you just need a, a team there to, you know, dish out the food and smile and so forth. But the food comes totally hot, ready to serve. And it's never the same thing twice. And they'll I help I, you plan I, menus. I, I was surprised. So, so we kind of finally honed in on, uh, my opinion is just people want a hot meal, you know, so. Um, so we had a hot protein, like, you know, uh, chicken or something, uh, and then a hot vegetable and then a hot starch. So, you know, chicken, you know, chick, chicken marsala with, you know, hot green beans and mashed potatoes. And th that's, that's like a $6 meal. I mean, it might be more like seven fifty in today's post COVID world, but I was surprised how cheap it is. You know, it's just amazing what they can do. Uh, and then you get stuff like maybe fried chicken one night, that's going to drop the price. You get a little fancy with, uh, some other stuff, it goes up a little bit, but overall pretty good. I think uh, any grocery store far surpasses caterers these days at ShopRite certainly sounds like a couple of us have good experience with good old ShopRite. Thank you. That's great news. We have a ShopRite right down the street, so I'm very excited. Uh, I didn't uh, know this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was surprised. I started when the first thing I had was a leadership meeting with all the leaders to just kind of say, okay, here are all the changes that are going to happen. And I'm like, well, where am I going to get, you know, two dozen bagels and two dozen donuts and this and that. So I went to ShopRite. I'm like, oh, this is easy. Call, order it, pick it up, put it on a table. Okay. I think this is the new plan. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, Thank easy. you. That's a great question because not everybody has a great big kitchen to work with. Oof, I can't imagine that, that being a huge part of Alpha's making all the food. That's a challenge. That I would not, I could not feel that question. I do know of um, my church did this years ago where uh, different small groups, you know, home groups uh, took it in turn to bring the food. Um, so that was a way to get everybody kind of engaged in the work of Alpha. So um, there are okay. there are answers out there. There you go. <laughs> in, that, in that regard, Dave, I'm wondering um, if, if you plan to use the if you use the shop right um that's going to involve funding uh how do you fund uh how do you fund that uh we just set aside uh the church set aside uh budget money for alpha uh fortunately at our church it's never been a question um you know uh the the thing that we always kind of tongue, tongue in cheek said is the people that we want at Alpha are the people that are mostly going to come for the free meal, you know. Yeah. So, and and I've I've done interviews, um, you know, with with people like at the close of Alphas, just walking around like man on the street interviews would call them, and and it would be like, uh, you know, what brought you to Alpha? I thought, hey, a free meal. You know <laughs> what? If I don't like it, I'll just watch a video and I can go home. But I get a free meal out of the deal especially guys. I don't know what's the matter with us, but it's like, <laughs> so it's like, you know, I, I heard that so many times. I know it's true. I know it's true. So I think it's a good investment in eternity for sure. And, you know, obviously I'm sure all of our churches represented here are great. So just part of the budget for sure. I think the best thing we can do as leaders is be, you know, be as smart as we can with a budget. And for us, the answer was ShopRite. So ShopRite or any grocery store seems to be um, you know, the best deal in town as far as budgeting the money wisely. Um, just to another follow up, do you offer, you have childcare, I'm assuming, and do kids eat the uh -huh. same thing as the, um, as the adults or do they eat something different? Do you provide a meal for them? Uh, I've been down through that road. That was very difficult. Um, so what the church told me when I asked if I could do childcare and they let me, but they said, you can, if you want to, uh, but the problem is, is the groups get done at 830 and that starts to get late for little children. Um, and they said, that's where you're going to run into issues. And now you've got groups that are going till nine. And then now you've got, you know, um, you know, uh, nursery care workers or little children helpers, and then they're going overtime. So after about two years of offering that, 
Because I mean, there were so many people that said, I would love to come, but I'm a single mom and I have a four-year-old. Unless you have childcare, I can't make it. So my heart was going out to those people. Uh, and so we did it, but it did not work. Uh, honestly, the, about 7, 38 o'clock, the children started falling apart. Mm -hmm. And it was super hard on the, the, the children's workers. Um, so it might work in a perfect scenario, especially if everybody's done at 830. But if you run alphas like ours, I mean, I've left the building at 10 o'clock. Like mm -hmm. I go, okay, it's 1030. Alpha's done. Anybody can leave always, right? But then I've, I've sat there with people for, you know, a very long time, even if they leak 15 or 20 minutes. Meanwhile, their four-year-old or the six-year-old or eight-year-old, quarter of nine to 8.30 to eight o'clock is a big time difference for them. So mm -hmm. we, we tried it. We struggled. We don't do it anymore. So okay. you're welcome to try it, but I yeah. have a feeling you might find the same journey. It's hard, though. It's hard, though. Single moms, single dads. Mm -hmm. Um Mil uh, uh, military families, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, somebody's working later. I'd love to come, but he's usually flying late or she's flying late. And it's just tough. It's yeah. just tough. So hard on the kids. Dave, can I ask you a question? Uh, there's, there's a, a, I'm wondering if you have tried in this post COVID world, um, not, I guess you could call it a hybrid alpha, but I mean, an in-person alpha where you have a call-in option and maybe ultimately where those who are, who are, who are dialing in for that are then in their own small group or rather than like a, a total zoom small group, rather than each small group, having a few people on zoom. I say that because nationwide, um, the, the course numbers have been going up this year, like as we've come out of the pandemic. And this was something we talked about at our, at our board meeting on Saturday, but um, nationwide participants in alpha are down 40%. And so there's something funny there that's happened where as we've come out of COVID, so more people were doing alpha online in 2021, and then they were doing total in 2022. So I just wonder what your thoughts would be. I don't remember whether you guys tried a hybrid alpha and what your thought on that is. So when COVID hit, so we had an April, so COVID hit what in March, right? So we had an alpha set for April and I thought, well, this will be going in 30 days. We should be fine. I still think back on that and crack up, right? Yeah, COVID will be over in 30 days. So anyway, so that first, so we went immediately to, as you know, we went immediately to um, uh, doing it online, a Zoom alpha, and we had like 125 people. So we had more guests show up mm -hmm. on that than probably, that was probably as large as we ever got for in-person. Um, so we had a pretty strong, uh, well-managed alpha online. Um, and we, we kept that open until people didn't show up any longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we went from 125, uh, to maybe, so that was spring. So then in the fall, uh, we were still online. So w there might've been 60 or 80. Uh, and then I, I'm, I'm trying to, I forget which, which year and which, which, uh, season we opened it back up again, but we had two. We had two, uh, when the church was opening back up again, mm -hmm. we had two alpha in-persons and where we also had alpha online. And at the second one, there was less than four people that showed up for online. Okay. So we basically offered it online and in person for as long as online had guests and they just stopped. So that was, that was our experience. Okay. And how are your numbers now compared to pre-COVID? Um, so the alpha that's launching next week, um, because we don't have the same, uh, push from the front because of a change in senior pastor, uh, I heard Sunday about 60. So I guess not too far off the mark. We'll probably have about 80, about okay. 80 okay. so I guess not too far. Okay. So I think that, I mean, that's encouraging because I was thinking, um, you know, Tasha, to your question about childcare, um, is that something to consider? Could that be kind of a workaround of that, of that hybrid? Um, I suppose it might be worth trying, um, but I, I think what I'm hearing is the, the, the tricks of the trade, the, the, the secret 
in addition to prayer, which we all know is the true secret of Alpha, the things that you've heard today are the, the real recipe of getting more people excited and coming to your Alpha, probably, that um, they'll get there if they can get there because it's something that, that they, yep. they want to do. The only exception we had was there was, I think, one or two sessions where we had a very unusual, very dedicated mom that handled any age group because, you know, when you, you're you not going to have like five different classes, you'll have one, right? Um, handling any, every different age group. And that was very patient that stayed as late as nine o'clock, 930. So she was a very unusual supporter. So she, I mean, she was basically babysitting anywhere from two to 10 children, all different ages all different hours. Um, I wouldn't be willing to do that. I'm not sure many. So we had a very unusual situation. So if you've got, if you've got a super person, whether that's a super mom or a super dad that can handle that, I think they'd be a little tough to find, then you might have some good results, but otherwise the kids do seem to fall apart. But Another church that um, that I serve and I've attended their their Alpha course as well. Um, that's their come back to church night um, for 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 everything, and so that's when they offer Awana for the children, which I believe begins, Cubbies begins like at age four, I think. And so they, I think they might already also they they have a little nursery, I think, that goes with that because it's the whole like come back to church night. So if you have children's programming already happening that night, then that makes it a little bit easier because they're already doing something. Are there any other questions? Well, this has been uh, terrific. I know I've been taking a lot of notes, Dave, and I hope the rest of you have as well. Um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm recording this, so you'll be able to re uh, watch it at any time and share it with your team. And um, just don't hesitate to reach out anytime that you have any questions, uh, anything you want to talk with me about, and um, I'll go ask Dave for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. God bless.